Good afternoon. I want to do an unboxing video on a Yamaha 40 horsepower um, fuel injected uh, model that I just bought for my boat. I had a Nissan two stroke, um, which was a great motor, but I had some problems getting it to run right. And of course, it's a two stroke, and God, I just love to have a four stroke. So um, this was hard to find. Uh, <clears throat> Apparently because just, you know, getting uh, with COVID and getting things in at the port in Los Angeles apparently has been a real problem. But I did find a local company that had one and was willing to sell it to me. So I think I was fortunate in that regard to start with. It's, um, it's everything that I did want in uh, 40 horsepower Yamaha. I would have preferred an electric, till, uh, an electric uh, lift on the... Um, on the motor, but it uh, didn't come with the model. Uh, this is a F40 horsepower uh, LEA, excuse me, LEHA, LEA, 40 LEA. And um, that's the long shaft, so it's got the 20 inch uh, differential between the transom and the, the bottom of the boat, which uh, matches up with this uh, anti cavitation plate. And so it was just exactly the right motor. Of course, it's it's all shiny and uh, nice looking, which I which is great, right? Um, but I did have to put the tiller handle on it myself because their mechanic wasn't available. So again, availability of labor is a problem everywhere. So um, and it would have been quite a while before I could get it together to have get them to get it together. And I said, hey, just give me the thing. I'm mechanically inclined. I can figure it out. And they seem to think somebody who's somewhat mechanically inclined could uh, get this together. And so um, I have, there was a little bit of consternation and hand wringing in the process, but anyway, it's all together now. And I haven't been out with it yet, but uh, because the weather's been real crappy in Portland lately, uh, we had the coldest April on record and the wettest uh, also. Nice, nice uh, tie in there. Um, since it is an unboxing video, I will tell you this one came in a, a big cardboard box that was totally reinforced with this, uh, like a stainless steel frame. That's what's left of the frame right there. So you've got some unbolting to do, just basic stuff. Get out your ratchet wrench. Um, what I did is I hooked it come along to the top of my structure here and just lifted it out and then hung it, brought the boat in and dropped it on. Um, I will say the top bolt pattern fit exactly the same as the Nissan, so they'll pop those right in. Um, I plugged the bottom holes from the old Nissan because they don't match up, and uh, I've yet to, I've got to get some bolts in here for the bottom portion of the mounting plate. Um, so, a couple things I guess to mention. Um, when, I, when you put the motor in, uh, when you get it on there, there's a little plate here. There's two bolts that come out of here that mount the tiller handle mounts on. And there's a little steel plate that comes with this to keep the uh, motor from turning in the crate. So just unbolt that and take that off. Please leave this on here. You need this. It looked to me like it was a separate, almost a package, packing piece. But this is for tightening up the tension on the motor so that... Um, if you're when you're using it and uh, if it you know it adjusts the tension so that um, you can either move, move it easily or even almost lock it in a position so that um, you don't have to be if you're if you're heading out straight on a calm lake you don't have to uh, you can let go of the tiller handle essentially let it, let it go so then leave that on there <laughs> learn all these things the hard way I have to tell you something there is no video online about putting this together and i assume that's because most uh most customers buy their boat um and or their motor and have the shop that they bought it from put it together and set it up for them um but i didn't you know in this environment that is not always going to be the case so maybe this will help somebody else um let's pop the top off of this guy here um so uh i will tell you so you, you just mount these two uh, these two bolts in here, and uh, they do supply lock nuts uh, to tighten those down, tighten those up. 
Um, and then there is a wiring harness, the main wiring harness that comes in. And uh, that is this piece right here. And it comes in and feeds up through here and the connection is made right here. So just loosen up. This is a removable uh, wire tie. So you loosen that up, plug that in. You have a twist locket. Uh, you can see there's a tab to make sure it's lined up correctly. Tighten that back down. And then there's also a position right here uh, where you snap that in to keep this uh, inside the profile of the shell. Um, and then also right here is a removable uh, wire tie. And then uh, what's a little frustrating for me is there's absolutely nothing in the manual, uh, the, the very cryptic kind of manual they have in 18 different languages, that tells you uh, what these other two wires do that come in here. And so if you would comment, anybody please comment, because you guys are a lot smarter than I am, about what these two other small wiring harnesses done, do. And so um, I want to pull those out because I, I'm, I am going to hang, uh, I am going to hook those up, but I tell you where they go. One of them matches up with this interface and then the other one matches up with this interface and of course when I looked at these now I'm you know I don't get around enough I guess I don't know what the heck is that type of connection is that some type of carbon tip on there I didn't know what it is this is just a cover plug so all you want to do is snap this off and then you've got um you've got the one uh that will attach there we'll find it in here in a minute and then another one which has a, a three-prong uh, fitting, goes on this one here. So if we come back around the other side, um, you know, I'm a real cheap YouTuber. I wanna get everything in one shot. So instead of putting everything together, I just wanna kinda of show you what this is. But if you press on this and pull that off, the one other wire will interface with this one. And then this will also come off. Uh, easily with this tab and then the w other wiring harness interfaces here. So these little round This is all that is is just a cover So um, I guess they didn't want to just leave this obvious and available um, So uh, That's nothing. So anyway, just make sure you can plug those in and then find out what the heck they do and um uh, I wish there was a, a video, uh, a YouTube video somewhere that explained what that does. So uh, the other things you're going to do when you're, you're hooking up, of course, is hook up um, the one control uh, cable that adjusts the throttle and then the one in the back, which is uh, adjusts the shifter. Um, so if you can kind of see that, this one in the back runs on this track. This is the reverse position. It's right in neutral now. And then the forward position is forward. And uh, so don't get these mixed up because you could easily put this one, put the throttle connection on the shifter slot and vice versa, put the shifter on the throttle. And intuitively to me at first it didn't make sense because usually this this is a continuous slot and I thought well that makes sense for a throttle slot because you have kind of a full range there and this one kind of has notches uh, which I would have assumed would be a notch for forward um, neutral and reverse but this is not the case so be sure this is the throttle connection here and the one in the back is the shift connection. So this is shift rod, throttle rod. One thing I'll tell you that, is, that I found is very important because I was frustrated about it. When the motor is not running, most of the time, it will shift into forward and it'll shift into neutral, but it will not shift into reverse. So I thought something was wrong with the work I was doing but I did uh, ask at the shop and the guy said, yeah, those are fiddly and sometimes you can turn the prop and you can put it in reverse. But he said, basically I tell people who come in the shop, keep your hands off of it. So uh, um, 
I ran the motor here. Um, it just purred like a kitten. But uh, as soon as I pulled it into reverse, it popped right into reverse, just like it should, and back. So if it's running, it'll work great. There must be some type of a safety, I think, electronic safety that keeps it from shifting into reverse while you are uh, not running the motor. And maybe that's if by some chance the motor did start and run when it was in reverse position, which it won't. It's only supposed to start in neutral, of course that maybe that it, that was some type of safety mechanism so but at any rate don't be frustrated by that just um just uh, do what i did hook it up um i use the earmuffs here to run it but i i also have a tank i like to use the tank uh, i know it's getting it's sucking up all the water it needs for the cooling system when i do use the tank i feel more confident about it um so what else um i would say first and foremost uh that the manual for attaching this is crappy. Um, it just shows a couple of pictures. Um, mostly it's all about adding all the languages, but um, it doesn't specifically talk about which one goes where here. Um, it just doesn't talk about a lot of stuff. It just has a couple cryptic pictures. So um, these here are the two tabs that I used, this one and this one here for lifting the motor. I did have to pull them off so I could get a bolt through here and the bolt, um, you know, then I bolted it through a chain and lifted it that way. So that's the way to go. Chain across the top and then uh, lift it from the center of that. Um, so uh, one other complaint I have is that uh, it comes without a propeller. Now, why would it come without a peller? Compel a little impeller. Um, because... Uh, the 25 horses, as far as I can see in any of the smaller motors, all come with a propeller. Uh, or, or, uh, anyway, um, this is one that was off my Nissan. It happens to fit perfectly. It's a 12 and a half pitch and it's a 10 inch. Um, so um, I'm sure it's probably going to be about right for medium, but uh, that doesn't make any sense to me at all why they don't include that um, in the box. Uh, so Yamaha, shame on you. What's that about? So the other thing is... Um, so this model has a nitrogen cylinder assist lift. So in other words, just, just like the hatchback on a car, um, if you lift this up and lift the motor, you can easily do that and then put the lever down and it locks it in place, at least for working on it. Uh, the manual does say not to trust that um, for trailering it. And that only makes sense to me uh, if that if that pops up, for some reason, this lever pops up while you're trailing it, and the motor drops, who, you know, could be a problem. But, um, so why don't, why don't they add a mechanism to this that you can lock it up in the trailering position? This also does not make sense to me. So I will tell you that uh, what I'm gonna do, they do make, you can find it online, it's a very hard rubber, cylinder that snaps over this piston to keep this from dropping down so i've got to pick that up i've seen all other kinds of gadgets where you've got a you know aluminum stick that comes up here and cradles the back of this but i just don't like that i don't trust it i don't have a trailer connection back here for to attach it to i suppose it, i could put it back to this um point here but you know this is greasy and what I see, anyway, there should be a clean system for doing that, but um, I don't see that there is. So, um, got to get that figured out. So, a couple couple things left to do here. Um, it's that easy to let the motor down. Um, of course, the uh, engine does not come with uh, pre-installed with oil. So, that, that's probably the worst thing you could do is not to put your oil in. It took about... Um, a quart and two thirds is about what I put in there. Uh, here's the fill point. Um, I tipped it up to fill so that there's less likely to spill. I get a funnel on there, and then um, you uh, you can test the. Here it is. Where is it? Uh, the oil level is right here. It's the yellow button, so you can pull this out. That's the dipstick. So. 
that works good. It's just a uh, compression fit, uh, pressure fitting in there, pop it back down in. So you get that full. What does that do? I don't know what that does. So there's no manual. Uh, it's not in the manual. It doesn't talk about it. Somebody make a video on this stuff I'm being ignorant about. I'd really appreciate it. Um, that'd be great. The other thing is I can't find the connection for the tube for the speedometer. So this is a speedometer tube right here. As you know, there's a little hole in the front down here where the water comes in, creates, there's a pressure sensor at the end of this, or there's supposed to be. So I have the other end of that here somewhere. Can't tell you exactly where it is right now, but I don't know where that hooks up. So, um, let's see. So I've got that in the up position. Here it is right here. Here's the tube end. This was... This came this way, right coming out of the the motor with the rest of the stuff. But I cannot see where that hooks up, so somebody please tell me where that hooks up, okay? I don't have to have a speedometer, but uh, I would like one. I'm going to hook it up with uh, maybe some type of expensive fish finder that I can't afford. And uh, so that I can get both the tachometer and the speedometer going. Um, otherwise... Uh, I've seen a lot of videos. This seems to be an excellent motor, so I'm really excited about getting out and using it. And uh, so I've got a couple things left to do just to get it ready to go. Uh, this is a 16 foot um, smoker craft, big fisherman. And uh, this had a 40 on it and I just loved it. And of course, it's nice to have all the horsepower that you want, but with the four stroke, it should even, um, it should troll at a good speed too. So, um, those are kind of the basics of it, but um, now you know some of the things that I know and you know some of the things that I don't know. And I wish you luck, and uh, if I think of something else I've forgotten, I'll add it on here. I will tell you, they do include the, the hose and uh, for the gas tank. Um, it's this black one that I have connected here now. But this has got a very stiff um, pump on here and I cannot get it to pump the gas. The old one I had worked fine. I tried that one, but I thought, well, new motor, I'm gonna put a new line on it. Doesn't seem to work. Well, anyway, maybe it, maybe it will and I'm doing it wrong. But you know, why would you include that uh, and not a, not a impeller? You know, come on, Yamaha. Uh, I love Yamaha. I had a Yamaha motorcycle, a FJR 1300. Uh, their engineering is outstanding, I'm sure. Uh, it always seems to be. Um, but anyway, uh, it would sure nice it'd be nice to have a video that goes over the details of this engine. And so, somebody please make one. Um, this is a. Let's see. This is a kind of a lock for the throttle. It's a tensioner for the throttle. This up and down, which you might suspect would be the up and down for the tilt on the motor, is not. This is an RPM. It says right there, RPM. So that'll drop. I think it's, I think it drops 50 RPM each down or up 50 RPM uh, when you're using it. I'll have to look that up, but um, it's right in there so that you can fine tune your uh, your trolling speed with that, which is which is great. Um, down here, I've got to see what those connections are. It looks like uh, oil pressure, probably, and temperature. So, yeah, it would be nice to know what those do. Because you see people using these motors all the time, talking about how they run, but nobody goes over, goes over it and then kind of explains it. I also do need to put a wire tie here. Uh, it came with a white one, but I want to put a black one on there. Small thing, of course. Um, but at any rate, that's just a starter on the system. And uh, best of luck to you. Talk to you soon.